Omnipresent stock analyst Dan Ives has some thoughts on Tesla following earnings. Naturally, let's see what he's got to say, keeping in mind that currently Dan is one of the analysts saying the most things that make the most sense about Tesla, yet still in my opinion, remains somewhat trepidatious in terms of really telling us how he feels. Seems like baby step after baby step in the right direction, but still seems to be underestimating Tesla's longer term potential, in my opinion. Dan, how relevant is the car making business at Tesla to this stock and how relevant should it be? Look, I mean, it's foundational relative to, you know, obviously what they're doing in the quarter and, and of course generating cash in the business. But the reality is the future is around AI. It, it Very well said by Dan Ice. Obviously today, Tesla sells vehicles. That's their primary business. That's the business that today is bringing in mountains of cash. Last I checked on the Q3 report, their mountain of cash and investments is now in excess of 40 billion US dollars, which is quite staggering. If you consider the amount of shit that could potentially hit the fan, the amount of shit that has already hit the fan, remember the futile fascist inhumane scamdemic lockdown, supply chain challenges, sky high interest rates, Tesla between growth rates, never mind Tesla investing extremely aggressive in the future, specifically around AI. Yet still they've piled up over $40 billion of cash and investments, predominantly on the back of their automotive business. That is quite a war chest. But unless they're extremely dumb, investors aren't investing for today. They're not investing for the present moment. They're not investing for now. They're investing for future. Future potential, future businesses, future profits, future revenue, future earnings growth, future opportunities. And as Dan rightly points out, Tesla's future is AI. The vehicle business has been a stepping stone to get there. They weren't selling vehicles and printing billions of dollars. They wouldn't have billions of dollars to have invested in AI. They wouldn't have been able to cover their vehicles in a suite of sensors, well, pretty much just cameras, collect data, train their vehicles for full self-driving. Then they wouldn't have been able to transplant that into the humanoid robot and have a massive unassailable lead slash head start, pun intended, because get it, the head with the brain, I won't explain, on humanoid robots at scale. Nor would they have had the scale to make extremely compelling gigantic batteries, grid scale batteries, which are printing money. Remember, we saw a billion, $1.1 billion of profits from the energy business in the Q3 report. But all of this has been a necessary prerequisite to Tesla's transformation into a massive AI driven company. Also, pun intended, autonomy is going to be massive. The humanoid robot is going to dwarf autonomy, which is going to dwarf Tesla's entire existing business. And investors have known this for some time to some degree. Otherwise, Tesla's valuation has never made sense. Well, maybe around IPO, you could argue it did. But it didn't take too long before investors were looking around the corner and seeing Tesla's longer term potential. First tech, e.g. computers on wheels, not cars. But Tesla has been pursuing autonomy now for give or take a decade. And they're now actually operating Robotaxis in Austin, in California, and on the earnings call, importantly disclosed cumulative Robotaxi miles driven in Austin, now in excess of 250,000. In California, over a million. And Tesla actually disclosed some very juicy details on the call around their AI projects that will transform the business, including estimated timeline to remove at least some of the human supervisors in Austin in the Robotaxis, who are, by the way, in the passenger seat, not behind the wheel, aiming for around end of year, a couple of months from now. Also throwing out a rough estimate for future cities, probably going to have somebody monitoring for the first three months, give or take. Again, these are just rough ballpark estimates, but Tesla now disclosing internal goals and best guesses, which they've never done before. Also disclosing, although we could figure this out from public information, the intent to launch pending regulatory approval in eight to 10 different metro areas in the United States by end of year. And even more importantly, Elon Musk threw out his early estimates for Optimus Gen 4, which is, they're finishing up Gen 3 now. That's going to be about a million units of capacity per year, which is huge. Tesla's automotive business today, only about double that. But Gen 4 Optimus, following Gen 3, which is the first production model, aiming for 5 million units a year, and then Gen 5, 50 to 100 million? In short, holy fucking shit. They ain't fucking around. It, it's around autonomous. It's around robotics. I think it's the most important chapter in the history for Musk and Tesla. That's why Musk now wartime CEO and obviously a new pay package. And I think that's what investors are focused on. Any sell-off here, look, we view autonomous alone is worth a trillion dollars of the story. This will, one with NVIDIA, be two of the best, you know, whatever you, physical AI plays in the market. Dan, I think a lot of people might agree with you that autonomous could be worth a trillion to someone. It's about whether it is for Tesla. What can you point to that demonstrates success? What are the metrics you're following that justify evaluation that this company currently carries? Yeah, first off, I mean, Robotax, and we've seen it in, in Austin ourselves, you know, I think that you'll have eight to 10 cities by the end of the year, and we ultimately believe 30 cities in the first half. 
then you ultimately look at what's happened there, the geofence area, the safety driver getting removed. It's my view this is all heading toward level four, right, in, in terms of when you think about autonomous. And what that means is no company in the world, BYD, you know, pick any name out there, will have the scale and scope to compete with Musk and Tesla when it comes to autonomous and cyber cabs. That's the future. And then Optimus, you know, I believe it's going to be, you know, a key part of this story. That's how you're going to get to $3 trillion market cap in the next 12 to 18 months. It might be the first time I've heard Dan Ives suggest accurately, I'll add, that no company on the planet is going to have the scope, scale, let's just say, capability to compete with Tesla on autonomy. I agree. I've been saying this for some time, but to hear Dan say this, wow, I wonder. I mean, after all the guys just throwing out a $3 trillion market cap, more than a doubling from where we are today as I record this, the next, call it, year and a half or so. I wonder if Dan has just changed his mind about no one being able to compete with Tesla in terms of autonomy at scale. Because as much as I agree with what he's saying, I'm not hallucinating. This is the same guy who in April of this year, call it six months ago, two quarters ago, slashed his Tesla stock price target to $315 per share, which is roughly a trillion dollar market cap. Six months later, we're now talking about $3 trillion around the corner. More on the subject of Tesla anal cyst price targets over time. Same article at the time of Dan's 315 price target. Big cut. Just wanted to point something out once again. The herd mentality among stock analysts covering at least Tesla stock. Looking at the average Tesla analyst price target. Going back to April 2024. So it's a 12-month period of time. Keeping in mind that the convention among Wall Street analysts is a price target unless otherwise specified, they're referring to what they believe the company is worth 12 months from now. It's a 12-month fair value estimate. Now, I think this entire world is a bit broken. If you're only looking one year into the future, you're going to miss a lot of stuff. Hence, analysts often missing the mark. At the very least, they should also have to at least publish a five-year estimate for fair valuation, at least in addition to their 12 months. 12 months is useless, bro. But just notice something. If these analysts collectively were geniuses, the wisdom of the crowd, you know, then... 12 months after April 6, 2024, Tesla's stock should have been around $200 per share. And in April next year, it should be around 346 It is a little puzzling as to why the average analyst price target in less than 12 months more than doubled. Unless Tesla's intrinsic value as a company in less than 12 months more than doubled. So let's have a look at the five-year Tesla stock price chart just to see what was happening prior to the $180 average price target in April 2024. Now, I say Tesla stock was down about 50% in roughly the prior year, heading a low closing price of around 147 bucks in April 2024, which coincidentally, with the short delay, is exactly where the lowest average analyst price target was for Tesla stock. All of these folks on average expecting Tesla in May 2025 to be $183 per share. In reality, by May 2025, Tesla stock more than double that amount, call it 300 bucks a share. Almost, call it 13 months later, yikes, around 350. Now, the real question I have is, did Tesla's value as a company double, triple in less than 12 months? Or is the stock market, at least over the short term, a voting machine, entirely sentiment driven and completely unrelated to the underlying value of companies? I'm never going to stop roasting the analysts. I mean, at least I'm never going to stop roasting them while they're embarrassing. Because when you have herd mentality and a bunch of sheep following one another and chasing the stock, you have shit like this time and time again. Average price target just chases Tesla stock one way or another. I just wanted to remind everybody, it was only six months ago with Tesla stock in the dunny, the toilet. The average analyst is, yeah, over the next 12 months, Tesla, $183 a share on average. Less than a year later, suddenly, miraculously, they're now at double that amount. And for those of you playing along at home, this 183 price target was not that far off 500 billion, maybe almost $600 billion market cap. If only, back in April, Dan had have held firm, not followed his colleagues on Wall Street chasing Tesla stock down. I'd have no reason to be bringing that up, but he did, so I do. All it would have taken is just to stand firm. You know what? This is all noise. It's bullshit. doesn't affect the company's long-term future. They're still going to crush it. No one's going to be able to compete with them on autonomy at scale. I don't care what my colleagues think, but that's not what happened. Now, in Dan's defense, I'm conspiracy alert. If he were playing the Wall Street game and wanted attention... You kind of need to say what the media wants you to say to appear so you can tell everybody, oh yeah, everything's bad, Elon bad, Trump bad, oh shit, fuck Tesla brand destruction, oh fuck price target decrease, please feature me across your programs on 27 different networks instantaneously so I'm everywhere all the time and can bring in more commissions to my firm, thank you. So if I was a conspiracy theorist, I'd actually be giving Dan a pat on the back for playing the game, 
bringing in some massive commissions. Instead of roasting him for chasing Tesla stock, I'd be commending him for doing what he needed to do to remain omnipresent. But because I am not a conspiracy theorist, that's obviously not a possibility. Therefore, I've got to roast the guy for nearly halving his price target six months ago, and now suddenly he's even beyond where it was prior to roughly halving it. But scale and competition, isn't this space, Dan, already looking very crowded? Look, I'd say, I mean, crowded in terms of Waymo being first mover advantage, but they're in, what, five cities, you know, relative to from a scale perspective. I mean, I think Tesla's going to own 80% of the autonomous market. And that's why, from an investor perspective, look, if you hate Tesla, you continue to hate it today. I get it. But the reality is that this is a golden age for Tesla looking ahead, from autonomous to robotics. And that's why you talk about November 6th, what's going to be the must pay package. And then they're going to own obviously a big piece of XAI. This is now the AI transformation happening at Tesla. Cars obviously are important, but that just sets the stage for what I think what's going to be a historical move. Well, let's talk about the pay package. Elon Musk had some very colorful language yesterday on the call when it comes to the proxy advisors for some of these institutional investors. Colorful or accurate language. I mean, he accurately described them as corporate terrorists. I've covered this recently, for those who don't know. The whole thing, the whole industry of proxy advisors is a massive fucking scam. These entities do not own stocks. They have no skin in the game, yet they advise others on how to vote on corporate matters. If their advice leads to poor outcomes, they're not accountable. Why would anyone listen to them? And the truth is, very few retail investors, if any, would listen to these fuckwits. But... Index funds, mutual funds, a different matter. Another example might be pension funds. I just want to make something very clear. Take, for example, an index fund. The goal of an index fund, let's say S&P 500, is to replicate the performance of that very index of companies, e.g. of the 500 largest companies in the US by market cap. This means that the S&P 500 is not investing in companies specifically because the S&P 500 and the so called managers there, think that company A, B, or C might outperform the market, is a great opportunity, is undervalued, etc. It's the polar opposite. They are not investing in any of these companies specifically because of anything to do with the company. They don't look at the company as a stock to invest in. It's rules-based, brain-dead, robotic, mechanical index investing. Meaning, there's a very good argument, a strong argument to be made, even for index funds, to not have the right to vote on shares they own because they don't have any meaningful skin in the game because they have not invested in these companies for the sake of owning the company because they see an opportunity, they see value. They're simply creating a vessel for investors to capture a slice of an index to match the performance of that index. The big challenge is many of these index funds own enormous, enormous slices of companies, meaning they own enormous number of shares, meaning they have enormous numbers of votes. And if they're so brain dead that they outsource their thinking to these, as Musk described them, corporate terrorists, the proxy advisory firms, and vote based on their advice, I'd much rather they just fucking abstained, then you can have proxy advisory firms that have no skin in the game are not at all accountable for their decisions. And if they're ruinous choices for the company, it doesn't matter. They don't personally suffer. If index funds listen to these brain-dead corporate terrorists and harm companies in the indices, the index funds themselves don't suffer. It's the companies in the basket of stocks they own as part of the index that suffer. What you end up with here is unaccountable morons with no skin in the game, the quote-unquote proxy advisors, forcing their ideologically driven opinions onto big funds who themselves only indirectly have skin in the game because they haven't invested in these companies for the sake of owning the company. It's a recipe for disaster. Something is seriously broken. How is it that these proxy advisory firms can even exist? They are, in essence, providing financial advice, yet they don't have any form of license as a financial advisor, and they have no skin in the game. They're not accountable if they make poor decisions and poor recommendations. It's a head scratcher. Musk is right to call them out. The whole industry is a massive fucking scam. What does he need to achieve in order to get that headline trillion dollar pay package? Yeah. And look, and go back to like the first pay packet, the one that's right now caught up in Delaware, like he did everything and more. And it just comes down to like, I agree in the fact that the biggest asset for Tesla is Musk. Musk is Tesla, Tesla is Musk. Look, you look, obviously some of those are very ambitious in terms of, you know, where they're ultimately going to hit in terms of the targets. But I think mid to high targets are hittable. And that's why incentivize him 
make him wartime CEO. That's what he's doing. That's where his laser focus, you know, versus maybe some of the, you know, dark days when he was with Trump administration, obviously some of the brand damage. And I just think like betting against Musk has been the wrong move again and again. And I think that's why shareholders overwhelming will, will approve this. Dan, let's just stay on the pay package. What's the opposition to the pay package? What's your understanding of what it is? Beside the fact that it's absurdly large, that kind of doesn't matter. What's the opposition to it? What don't people like about it? Look, I mean, obviously, it's just, you know, the, the, the view from an excess perspective, the actual numbers, you know, why do they actually have to do this? But I think to some extent, it's, it's investors that don't understand the Tesla story. And I think any of the core believers, any of the core followers understand that the future of Tesla lies in Musk being CEO. And I think from a pay package perspective, given the targets, set high bars. That's where you want Musk. So you don't want to set low bars. And I think that's I think the board stepped up, Robin stepped up. This is the right pay package at the right time for what's going to be what I view as a golden chapter for, for Tesla. Hard to argue with that. And I do have to remind everyone watching, make sure if you haven't already, you vote on all of your Tesla shares with the board's recommendations, unless, of course, you want to harm Tesla and your investment. And also make sure your friends, family, colleagues, and even mortal enemies have also voted with their Tesla shares too. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has been part of my daily health protocol for almost half a decade. It's packed full of vitamins and minerals and helps me fill in nutritional gaps while supporting energy, digestion, and immune function. It also has prebiotics and probiotics to promote gut health. I take my health very seriously, and so should you. Try AG1 today by visiting drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link in the pinned comment and enjoy a free welcome kit with vitamin D3 plus K2 and AG1 travel packs. That's drinkag1.com slash SMR.